what is worse, traveling in a lift without a safety brake or the embarrassment that Mr. Che will get at school from this little animation I made with his photo. Probably the embarrassment of the photo because every lift has a safety brake, even this one. Best acting skills? Well, that was lucky. A traction lift usually has two parts. The part you ride in, of course, called the cab or car, and a counterweight which tries to balance out the system. These are linked with several cables that go over a big wheel called a sheave, which in turn is connected through a gearbox to a motor. When the motor runs, the sheave turns, which moves the lift up and down. This video is all about this small wheel. I realize that it may not make a lot of difference to your life to know what it does, but maybe one day it will, and you'll come back and thank me for making a video on it. This lift has what's called an overspeed governor. This yellow wheel on the left does the same as the black wheel on the right, but there is a difference. The wheel on the left monitors the lift speed. If the lift gets too fast, the shaking of this plate intensifies, which causes the switch to leave the plate. This then shuts down the lift and the brake is applied on the motor. If this fails to do the job and the lift gets even faster, the wheel is designed to mechanically stop and jam. The second stage pulls in the safety brake, which I'll come to in a moment. Not all lifts have an overspeed governor. This old lift doesn't because the regulations at the time did not require lifts to have an overspeed governor. It was considered that lifts that only travel short distances, like this one with only two levels, would not have enough room to develop enough speed to activate it. So where does this guy come in? This is Mr. Otis, who came onto the scene in 1853, inventing the safety elevator. To make them safe, in other words, the car cannot plummet to the bottom of the shaft and kill everybody, lift cars were required to have their own brake. That was lucky. So now we have this wheel in the motor room. So what about this old goods lift? which doesn't appear to have a wheel or any kind of governor. But when we look at the top of the lift shaft, there is the wheel. This takes us nicely to the topic of what the wheel does. To do this, let's look into the shaft. To activate the safety brake under the lift car is what this cable is all about. One end is attached to the brake on the lift car. The other end is attached to the counterweight. The cable moves up and down with the lift and nothing ever happens other than this. However, if the main cables should fail, then the car goes into freefall, so does the counterweight. The safety brake cable becomes tight, which pulls in the brake on the lift car and it locks into the guide rails. To remove the brake is not easy, as the weight of the lift car is still maintaining the brake into an engaged position. Once this has happened, there is normally a mechanical process involved to release it. Check out this clip where the mechanic puts his foot on the safety brake cable to test it. 
This engaged a brake on the lift car and the poorly built frame collapses. But what if the main cables were to fail and then the weight of the lift and counterweight were to snap the safety brake cable? If this happened, the counterweight would go into freefall and hit a giant spring at the bottom of the shaft. But the safety brake is maintained because it's physically wedged into the rails by the weight of the lift. And that's what this wheel does. Not much really happens until the main ropes fail where it could save your life. To see some of the other videos featured in this video, including this derelict lift or this vintage goods lift, which is still in working order, please see the links coming up at the end of the video. I take a lot of time and effort to bring you quality, interesting videos. I'm all about quality, not quantity. Thanks for watching and please consider subscribing to the Mr. Matt and Mr. J channel. Yep.